Good afternoon. This is another in our series of Daughters of Liberty videos. This one is a continuation of information on growing heritage wheat. Now, um, this year we have a number of test plots that we have grown to see which ones have done the best in our climate, which is Pacific Northwest on the Straits of Juan de Fuca here at the George Washington Inn and Estate and the Washington Lavender Farm. Uh, what I have here and am standing in front of is a test plot of Kentish red straw. Now this wheat was planted last fall and it overwintered. It dies down a bit in the winter, then it comes back strong in the spring with a good set of roots and it matured and we harvested the most of it and now it is in mid-October. There's a, a little bit left. We intended to leave some for the birds, but since it hasn't rained yet here and it's not been blown down by the wind, I decided to pick off a few more heads. Now, uh, when we harvested it the last time, I simply cut it off at about chest level because we're going to do all the processing by hand. I didn't have a mower to cut it off at the ground. Instead, we used a, just a hand sickle and cut it off just at this height right here. You can see some of the stand here behind me is already, you can see the heads have been cut off. There are a few heads left. And what I'm gonna do now is just break off the heads and I'm going to collect them in my apron. Now, in all I want are the heads because that's where the grain is. Um, and I'm just collecting the heads one by one, popping them into my apron. And this makes the easiest for hand processing it one, um, one head at a time. In the past years, over the last few years, uh, going back maybe five years or more, we have had the benefit of um, a very small experimental grain harvester from Washington State University, which comes out uh, in between the ferries and a long distance away from Mount Vernon uh, to harvest our wheat. This year, with the gas prices rising and a various change in property ownership in the area, it, uh, the ferries also didn't run frequently. It became known to us that the availability of a mechanical harvester is no longer part of the plan. So the last time we harvested, I decided to set out to see how well I could manage the harvest on my own with no mechanical advantage. And that means uh, with the seed head, getting out the kernels, and, and when you get the kernels out separated from the long, the long stalks, you end up with all the, the little uh, uh, extra bits around the kernel. The, the sheaf has a lot of little extra bits, and then you have to winnow it. And so uh, what I do is to get the seed heads out from the head, I have uh, developed a technique whereby threshing it is a matter of stomping on it with my feet and then rolling it between my hands, along with then the winnowing, which is just throwing it up in the air and letting the wind separate out the lighter weight bits from, this, from the, of the actual kernels. So that's what we're doing here today. Just gathering up the last of the seed heads, having no um, extra stock is going to be easier for me alone to handle. And that might be something that I will do with some of the kids in my neighborhood. So here is my collection, if you can see in my apron, uh, just the seed heads and, and a few extra kernels that fall off like this. Uh, that's what we're doing today. The technique that I'm using today is quite simple. I'm just pulling off the seed head and I have my apron tucked up into my waistband and it is my gathering bag. This is a very common uh, occurrence for women who were out harvesting in the field to use the apron and this is a heavier linen which meant to be nice and sturdy. 
and it also two hands free I can tuck it up both sides and just pick off the heads and drop them in so harvesting in this manner would have been very efficient in uh, the late 1700s or any time earlier basically before the Industrial Revolution when uh, everything had to be done by hand. Now with a few seed heads in here what I can do next is if I have another container underneath me I might just run my hand back across the seed head and you can see here that I have a collection of little outer coverings and kernels of grain. This is the grain that we want to save. The lightweight covering on it, the hull, is will blow away in the wind if I drop the kernels from a distance and that's called winnowing. And so I'm just dropping the kernels and I would drop them into a bigger container and the wind blows away uh, the extra hulls. So it's not, it doesn't take much time if there's a wind blowing to get that done. And it also didn't take much time to just pull the seed heads off as I went. Before the Industrial Revolution, um, uh, if you didn't have the opportunity to have uh, the whole field mowed by a group of, of uh, traveling helpers and farmers, this might be the way you would have done enough grain at a time with the assistance of small children. Anybody tall enough to reach up here is tall enough to harvest the grain. Just pulling off the seed heads. It doesn't take any particular amount of experience. And over a bucket, you can roll the seed heads between your hands and the kernels fall off. Then you can run, roll them, you can wear a pair of gloves if this is irritating for the hands. And that's the result. So, there I have my collection. So the next question might be, what do you do with this? This is a wheat variety that was popular during George Washington's time in the 1700s. And the yield, which means how many pounds per acre, the yield in bushels per acre, is not as high as wheats that may be in a more modern time. But for harvesting like I'm doing, it doesn't matter what the yield is. We're just going to use it for our own purposes. And uh, once we get the kernels out, which I had showed earlier, the kernels, I'm, they're just stuck inside this head. This is a mixture of the kernels and the little coverings on the kernels. Then I'm going to grind the kernels into flour. Um, the flour is ground when you are ready to use the grain, not before, because it's a whole grain. And once you grind it, um, then it starts to uh, turn into, it turns into flour and it only really lasts for about a year once it's ground. So storing the grain um, unground is the best idea. Storing it in a particularly cold temperature also helps because you don't have to worry so much about mold or insect. That's a problem with anybody storing their grains. Once you start to grind the flour, I personally only grind as much flour as I need for the batch of bread, muffins, biscuits, or pancakes that I'm making at a given time. Now, um, if I want to measure out how much I'm going to need, I would just take the kernels and I'd measure out uh, maybe 200 grams uh, of, of uh, white wheat or a red wheat like this one, or of barley, or of rye, any number of grains combined and then I would grind those and I usually measure out a couple hundred grams for each variety and that would and sometimes that's two cups uh, total for flour I think the minimum I use for making bread for just myself in a small loaf would be uh, three cups a standard family bread might be six cups so that's translated into just how much I would need of the grain so I think that uh, gives you an idea of what you would use this for. This is good for um, pancakes, uh, for muffins, for cookies, for biscuits, 
and for breads. Uh, it's a red, a red wheat, and it's a, a still a hard wheat. It's not just a soft wheat, so good rising capacity. I thank you for watching.